Jeffrey Solomon. So you are the first investment bank to offer spot crypto trading for institutional investors. That's correct. Why, why, is, why has nobody else done? Is it because you're less regulated than they are? No, I think there's a couple things. First of all, there's some huge barriers to entry. The lack of federal oversight here means that each different state has its own rules. So we we spent better, the better part of the last year uh, going state by state and building up the ability from a regulatory standpoint to actually execute trades. But institutions themselves have been reluctant to participate in a meaningful way uh, in crypto trading because Honestly, the custody issue has actually been a big, a big problem for them. And we did a partnership uh, and invested in a company called PolySign. They've got a custodian called Standard uh, and, uh, and Standard Bank. And so for our stamp, from our standpoint, um, we, we partner with them so we can offer full end-to-end -end solutions from custody all the way through to... So you've to, been planning for this for a while. Yeah. Do, you, do you expect all of the Wall Street banks to follow suit eventually? I think eventually, as, as the uh, federal regulatory landscape um, um, lays out over time, I think there will be more, more participants. But, you know, right now we're doing things in a very... Uh, it's, it's all compliant, it's all fully regulated, but it's mostly regulated by state regulators. Does this mean that you do not see Bitcoin as a speculative bubble? Yeah, I think Bitcoin uh, trades in a, in, in a, in a, as a store of value in its own right. So this isn't just about Bitcoin, it's not about that. And what it's really about is the proliferation of different ways to, for people to finance their businesses or actually to participate in the creation uh, of new businesses and new business models. And, you know, there are literally thousands and thousands of coins and tokens already. The, the vast majority of the trading occurs in a relatively small percentage of them. It's really a lot like equities in that regard. And so we want to be in a position where we can offer our clients institutionally the ability to trade without without worrying about where 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 how do I custody how do I account for it? There's a lot of demand. Is that are you seeing? Yeah, yeah. We, we've seen a significant amount. So we've been hosting events and talking to our clients for over well over a year. And we see that demand, and 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 the answer is how can we develop a solution for for those institutional clients? And that's really what we've done together with Standard Custody and PolySign. Wanted to ask about other parts of your business as well. The stock has has underperformed this year. Um, capital markets concerns, M&A is down, IPOs are down. Is, is that is that what's plaguing investors? And how, how does that look for the rest of the year? Yeah, so I, I listen, I think, you know, we had two amazing years uh, in which uh, in which we had a tremendous amount of financing activity and a lot of M&A activity post uh, the pandemic. Uh, I think these markets are always overstretching and overreacting. Our business is built to be a business that, that lasts uh, regardless of market environments. We're continuing to see tremendous demand for M&A activity. I think a lot of our clients are waiting for the market to settle out here uh, so they tremendous can Tremendous demand for M&A activity? Yeah, yeah. I, I still think that there's a lot that has to get done. So one of the things that's happening in the market, in my, in my opinion, is that we're, we're undergoing, a, there's a lot of uncertainty around different fundamentals that have underpinned our market for maybe decades, right? Right. Uh, peace in Europe is a good example. Right. That we, we don't have that. So commodity, low interest rates, low interest rates, inflation. So the market is digesting that. And when, when the market is not aware that those things are happening, and then it becomes aware there's a huge amount of volatility, which is what we saw in the first quarter. Now you're seeing the VIX come in. Right. Think people are beginning to process these unknown unknowns to becoming known unknowns like we know there's inflation we're just not exactly sure how it so plays it's out environment you think it just becomes the market processes that that's what the market does and as we end up in a situation where it's a little bit less volatile companies need to get financings done and they need to get m a done what about in biotech in particular because you have sort of distinguished yourself now you're crypto but but as a healthcare and biotech place for capital markets and that's been a weak part of the market really since february of last year yeah it's totally collapsed so we a, we tend to spend time in places that are ahead of the curve right that is the moniker for cowan it's really about uh looking over the horizon to see where are the trends and how can we help those companies finance themselves if it's disruptive growth we're going to pay attention to it because that's what we do best so crypto and biotech fall into that category not well known it re requires a firm like cowan to explain it to a lot of folks so for biotech yeah, it's been a bear market for a year. And a lot of the people that I've been talking to in biotech, a lot of the investors are simply, again, waiting for that moment where we can see a floor under the macro environment and where we can begin to understand that. There's a lot of companies, probably like 40% of the publicly traded companies uh, are going to run out of cash in 18 months. That means they're all going to need to do financings at some point in the next 18 months. Just it's facts. That's that, so good for your business. It's going to be great. And and, and what we're but seeing there's, is there's a lot of regulatory 
concern still, isn't there? Mansions talking about prescription drugs again and a new Build Back Better. There's questions about the FDA since the Biogen. Alzheimer's yeah, I think there's all, that stuff always hangs around. But the, the investors that are in the know, right, the folks that I talk to in the biotech space, and we spend a lot of time with them, uh, have all raised significant amounts of money. New fund launches have actually happened. They're sitting on a lot of dry powder and simply they're, they're, they have the shopping lists. And so these stocks have become incredibly cheap on a relative basis and in some cases on an absolute basis. Many of them are trading at discounts to cash. So we're going to see some deals. So I think we'll see deals. I think we'll see financings. And I think we'll see investors, again, over the course of the next year uh, reemerge because there's value there for the first time in a really long time. And that's what we've heard from a lot of investors.